now we have uh, a little bit of time. I think this is Karl Kaiser, who is a German and American. But I would say 75 German, 20, no, 70% German, 30% American. <laughs> Uh, listen, listening to the two of you, I am struck by a possible interesting parallel. As we all remember, and IFRI and other European institutes did studies in the 70s and 80s on this, at the beginning France was the clearly leading space power in Europe, far ahead of the others. And it pulled the others along, and I still remember very well when the French had to put a lot of pressure and persuasion on the Germans to make them move into this area. Because only by being a group you have sufficient resources because it's very expensive to do these things. But there's also a political motive behind it, as we all know. And Madam Minister, it seems to me, aren't you now going possibly the way France once did, being the leader of a future coalition of partners, possibly in the region, in order to gather enough resources to do more than you can do nationally as, as a country alone. So that would be one question. And the other one would be, do you see a possibility that, like Europe, you may move to a, an area which is not just only civil, but possibly for other uses, observation satellites, for example, Europe's doing that, which can be used for civil purposes, but also for, for example, control of arms control agreements, or possibly even military purposes. So, two questions. Please, madam. So, on, on the topic of the first question with regards to um, the collaboration within the region, like you said, it's, space is really expensive. And the riskier it is, the, you spoke about constellation, for example, of communications, that's a paradigm shift. So we're, we're at a time where any program that you take is riskier, therefore more costly in some instances. You're creating paradigm shifts in, in sectors. So the earth observation um, sector of imaging earth and various uh, wavelengths has been transformed over the course of the last 10 years. The next 10 years, we'll see a full transformation of communication systems. And I think navigations will, will, will come in sometime in the next decade. So you're talking about entire paradigm shifts that, that requires you to reinvest in infrastructure, reinvest in methodologies of development and so on. It's natural for coalitions to be formed because like you said, you need to offset risk and you need to have various resources to create the right impact that you'll have. It's a natural progression for a region to move towards um, uh, working. And it's not about force. It's about the mutual benefit, which, which is what happens in Europe. It's mutual benefit that pushes this development forward. There will be competition, but it will be healthy competition to further advancement and development. So that's on the front of, uh, of cooperation. When you're talking about utilizing space systems, yes, there are civilian uses of space. Space started as a, a, a military endeavor. What we're looking at at the moment is economic drive and economic development for the UAE's purposes. And that's where a lot of resources and investment is going in. Um, do countries utilize space for various, for various uses? Yes, it's normal, it's natural, everyone does it. Uh, but the primary purpose will remain from the space sector in the UAE for the economic development. Okay, so now uh, I, We'll take three questions. There are three. I, 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 you are identified. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay. I, I suggest that we take the three questions together and you uh, answer, not to uh, be uh, too late. And I start with Farid Yassin. Questions that is very biased. I used to be a scientist. And. Um, Money for science is scarce. Dans le micro, dans le micro. Money for science is scarce. People fight for it. There's competition. Um, there are areas that are very trendy, like space uh, exploration. There's particle physics, which you mentioned. There's uh, com uh, com uh, quantum computing. Uh, the, the topic I want to mention here is fusion. Why? Because we're all under the threat of uh, climate change. 
And one of the silver bullets that is being talked about uh, as a solution to the problem of the energy that we face is fusion. Europe is very active. I'm sure uh, you face some competition for the funds uh, that you get from people involved in fusion. And in fact, either the new uh, international uh, uh, reactor is being built in Kandahar, France itself. Um, my question to you is, uh, are you being affected by this, by this uh, uh, new focus on, on funding towards addressing climate change? And the second question that I have has to do with uh, the involvement of the private sector. Uh, most of the projects involving fusion are publicly funded. But now in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, we are seeing private investors building tokamaks or equivalent machines at a much uh, lower cost in the hope of finding a much cheaper, quicker silver bullet. Um, is there a similar project in France or, other, or elsewhere, elsewhere in, 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 in Europe? And if there isn't, why? Thank you very much, Serge Sur and Daniel Andler. Serge Sur. Merci beaucoup. Nous avons surtout parlé des aspects technologiques, économiques, scientifiques de l'utilisation de l'espace. Parle un peu plus. Dans, dans et tout il est évident que ce sont des aspects qui aujourd'hui sont dominants et qui sont compliqués par la multiplication du nombre des acteurs spatiaux qui d'ailleurs, cette multiplication encourage la coopération, tout au moins pour ce qui est des activités pacifiques ou des activités civiles, lesquelles sont aujourd'hui dominantes. Mais je me souviens que lorsque j'étais aux Nations Unies, la grande question de l'espace, c'était la course aux armements dans l'espace et la question de l'arms control, à laquelle faisait allusion tout à l'heure Karl Kaiser. C'était l'IDS, c'était le grand débat à ce sujet. Alors aujourd'hui, je crois que les civilisations militaires n'ont pas diminué et le spatial reste toujours déterminant pour les communications, pour la surveillance, pour les opérations militaires, pour la dissuasion nucléaire. Et le traité de 67, qui reste aujourd'hui la charte de l'espace, qui contient certains principes qui sont des principes simples et des principes qui ont jusqu'à présent été respectés, euh, la question que je pose aux, aux experts, c'est ce traité est-il aujourd'hui suffisant Parce qu'il est essentiellement consacré aux questions militaires. Il est très précis en ce qui concerne la non-prolifération des armes dans l'espace et même l'interdiction de placer des armes de destruction massive dans l'espace, mais il est très elliptique sur le reste. Alors, est-ce que ce traité est aujourd'hui suffisant pour les utilisateurs, ou est-ce qu'il demande à être transformé, parce qu'il a été en fait conclu entre les États-Unis et l'URSS, et il est possible qu'il ne réponde plus exactement aux besoins des utilisations actuelles. C'est là-dessus que je serais très heureux d'avoir le point de vue des, 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 des panélistes. Merci Serge. Donc, la dernière question, Daniel Andler. I'll, I'll be brief because the two previous speakers were gave excellent uh, questions. So, first of all, I'm not entirely reassured by the fact that right now uh, the non-military activities seem to predominate. Uh, I, I wonder whether uh, when push comes to shove, uh, the military won't sort of take hold of the field and, and, and make it go in the direction it wants. So that's my first question. My second question is about cluttering. I've heard that there's a big problem of satellites cluttering the space and how that problem is will be solved. And the third one has a little bit to do with the fact that there are limited, um, limited resources. And I was one in, in science, I was wondering whether, especially Philippe Baptiste, thought that uh, we had the right sort of young inventive engineers and scientists to really uh, fuel progress in the space field or whether we should start thinking about new ways of training our young engineers and scientists. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So uh, I would like to give you the last word. So I give the, first, I give the floor to, to Philippe. Merci beaucoup. Uh, chacune des questions mériterait uh, un débat uh, long. 
Euh, Peut-être quelques éléments. Est-ce qu'on sent une, une compétition, par exemple, entre les questions autour de la fusion uh, Sorry, uh, switch to English. Uh, do, do, do we feel that there is some kind of competition of resources, of uh, funding between a, a research program uh, on energy like uh, fusion, for instance, and, and space uh, I, I would say the answer is, is, is no, not, not directly. Uh, And, and typically, I would say that the, the, the countries that invest the most in uh, either program also invest the most in the other one, because basically those countries are the countries that do believe in technology and do believe in the fact that uh, the technology can really change the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm not really scared by this competition of, uh, of, uh, of funding. I would say um, it really goes in the same direction. Uh, ju just perhaps uh, a, a word on, uh, on uh, militarization of, uh, of space. Uh, this is, of course, a, a big issue. Uh, I just want, if, if I just perhaps focus, the question is very wide, but if I just want to focus on launcher, which is only a subset. Huh? But um, today, I think that we have worldwide something like 250 uh, companies, either small ones, startups, or larger ones, that wants to develop a mini launcher. So a mini launcher is really very close to a ballistic missile. So the question of proliferation and the question of how do you manage uh, the, 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 this technology, I mean, of course, the rules are the same and all big countries will do their best to, to monitor what happens and to forbid some kind of loss of technologies to, to, to avoid this kind of... Uh, of, um, of uh, bad usage of, uh, of launchers. But still, the question will be there because when you have so many actors who are developing technologies everywhere in the world, I mean, this question will be really, be really key. Uh, well, well, again, I go very fast because we are out of time, but uh, the question of uh, debris and the question of uh, how do we manage pollution in space is a key question. The key question, especially in low Earth orbit, so the, 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 the orbit which is very close to Earth, and where you have a, an incredible increase of uh, the number of satellites there, it's an exponential low, uh, it goes very, very fast, and we will be in trouble. The question is not to know whether yes or no we will be in trouble, the question is to know when we will be in trouble, trouble meaning collision. Uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and collision meaning that you have much more debris and the, and the probability of another <coughs> collision which is heavier again. So the question is how do we regulate space? We, at some point, this question has to, to come and I think that we, we, we have limited choice. We, we, we have to think about that and, and we cannot only rely on good wills of private actors. Uh, there has be some kind of, uh, of, uh, of global strategy, worldwide strategy on, on this question. Um, perhaps, uh, finally, to answer the question on private investors, and if I can reformulate the question, the question was basically, wh where are they in Europe? Um, I would say that we, we have limited number of private, of people, uh, of billionaires who do invest in space, at least in France, I, I'm, I'm afraid I know Uh, none of uh, them right now, but I hope they will come very soon. Uh, still, we have a lot of companies that invest in space, and we have many new... Pri I, I'm not talking only about Airbus and Thales, which are giants and, and which are key players in space, but there are also new ones. Let me mention, for instance, uh, uh, Kineis, which is a, a young company which uh, manufactures uh, small satellites For, uh, for many different usage, especially uh, IoT. It's, it's, uh, it's very young, it's very dynamic, it comes with very low, uh, very low price, so I'm pretty sure it will be very, very, uh, very, very successful uh, soon. Or, well, there are many, many of them. Still, I really believe that we have to put much more effort in, in, in this new space sector because it will, it will really boost space technology all over the society, and it's a huge economic growth too. So we, we will invest a lot there. Thank you very much, Madam. Um, I think we 
the, the, if I got this correctly, the questions were across three different streams. One with regards to militarizing space and proliferation space. It's about each actor being responsible for, for what we've all signed on. Um, there will be more and more companies up and coming around the world, uh, like you were mentioning, and it's about how the local regulations reflect uh, the intentions of the countries in terms of uh, proliferation of space. On the aspect of the private sector, I think it was specific to Europe, but for the private sector itself, what it gives us and what we've seen that it gives us is new innovations because these companies are up and starting and they develop things different than it's typically developed in agencies that have been around for 40 and 50 years. Space, I think, is a highly, as innovative as it is, it's a highly indoctrined mechanism of design and development, especially in larger institutions. And a lot of it is inherited from failed missions. There are policies and procedures that right. some entities are following that are from failed missions in the 70s, as an example. When you get new entrants into space, be it countries that are entering newly into space or companies that are entering new space, they don't have those baggage of what I call relationships that went wrong. Uh, they can start a fresh page and therefore they're able to innovate and development. Therefore, there needs to be a nice balance between the two. What we need to see in terms of investment, I know there's a big hype in investment. Parts of it are hype, parts of it are real. What we need to play as space agencies are, is ensuring the sustainability of the real investment to carry through over the course of the next decade because it's that the way that we're able to develop new mechanisms of retraining engineers and new mechanisms of thinking in terms of space systems development. We can find better products and services coming to space and we can find a solution to the clutter that we have in low Earth orbit. Uh, because what we can bring to the table today is, is discussions on a policy front and an international policy front. The real innovation will come in ensuring that we're accessing space, finding out early if there's collisions, but more importantly, understanding better how do you, in a low-cost manner, declutter space. And that's an innovation that will come from the private sector, and I don't think we have, a, we have conce concepts, but no solutions that are, that are real for those. Um, and... I hope I did answer the three questions, but that's what I got from those. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much for this, I think, a very interesting and stimulating uh, discussion. I can ensure you that in the coming years, the issues of technology, space in particular, will uh, play an increasing role in this world uh, policy conference. But, you know, world policy conference, there is the word policy. And it seems to me that we are, I would say, at the beginning of a collective reflection on what, uh, how policy should be uh, approached. We have spoken a lot in other sessions of uh, well, the idea of flexible alliances, cooperation, all that in a world that we want all of us, the middle powers, to remain as open as, as possible, what I like to call reasonably open. And uh, there is a, a, a lot of work to, to, to do uh, to, uh, uh, to become more operational uh, in the, these uh, extremely uh, exciting uh, fields. So I can tell you that for myself, I am not a candidate for a trip uh, in the extra atmosphere, uh, even uh, if I were a billionaire, and uh, even less uh, a candidate for, for Mars. Uh, when the day comes, I will be elsewhere. Thank you very much uh, indeed.